Schneider Ski Wear, in cooperation with the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance, is proud to bring you the following video presentation. Certain movements or skills are essential ingredients for good ski technique. The CSIA teaching method is founded on three basic skills. Every ski turn is made up of pivoting, edging, and pressure control. Knowing these skills and how they work together is important for your success as a ski instructor. Understanding these skills is also essential for accurate detection and correction. Although there are different ways of turning or pivoting the skis, in a given situation, all good skiers turn or pivot their skis in the same way. With proper pivoting, the skier finds it easier to maintain balance and to ski with rhythm. Pivoting can be described as the action that results from using the muscles to turn the lower leg. In skiing, the action of the legs looks like this. Notice that only the lower body is involved in this motion. In order to progress to advanced technique, the skier must be able to pivot the skis in this way. It may be helpful to think of the body as a number of blocks separated at the pelvis. The hips are in the upper blocks, the feet and legs in the lower blocks. This form of counter-rotation is essential for good skiing. It should be noted that if the separation point in the body is too high, the result is an awkward and ineffective position. It tends to look something like this. It may be easier to see the incorrect position by considering this illustration demonstrated here without the use of skis. Notice how the hips have become over-rotated. Now, once again, let's consider the proper movement. This action turns the feet with a minimum of upper body movement. Another way to understand the concept of pivoting is to place the hands together and turn them like this. The correct action will result providing the hands are kept apart. Now let's consider the correct movement again, only this time with the feet. You'll notice that as we move the separation point lower, the mass of the upper portion becomes larger. This helps to stabilize the upper body. In order to develop the feeling of balancing on turned skis, exercises like side slipping can be introduced. This is one of the best exercises for this purpose. The correct body position for side slipping looks like this. But now notice what happens when the hips turn the same direction as the feet. This effect can also be easily observed from the back view. The hips should face the same direction as the shoulders. Another thing that can help instructors spot this common error is to look for this characteristic pull in the clothing, as well as a sharp bend in the lower spine as shown here. Once again, in the side-slipping exercise, as in all skiing, the hips and the shoulders should face the direction of momentum. Students who have difficulty with side-slipping might begin instead with a wedge as shown in this demonstration. In other words, a one-legged side-slip to start with. The instructor can assist in this maneuver. Standing below can lend great assurance to the student. Timid students may require even more encouragement as shown in this demonstration. For more advanced students, the pivoting exercise we see here combines counter-rotation with flexion, extension, and rhythm. It simulates the movements of advanced skiing. Notice how the pole plant contributes to upper body stability.
Another good exercise for developing pivoting is a single turn produced from a side slip. You'll notice that minimal effort is required if the skis are pivoted when they are running flat on the snow. For a different perspective, the instructor should consider the view of the skier from behind. Notice how in this case, the hips do not turn much, if at all. As we have seen in the previous illustrations, pivoting can be practiced in many ways. Here is just one example of an advanced variation. So whether the skier is a beginner or expert, well-developed pivoting skills are essential for maintaining or improving good ski technique. Developing the skill of edging allows the skier to control his momentum and capture the energy in his turns. There is a degree of edging present in any ski turn, no matter what the level of student. However, developing good edging skills is a necessary step towards becoming an efficient skier. With better edging skills, the skier can handle higher speeds, steeper slopes, and more difficult snow conditions. Something to remember. Expert skiers apply only the amount of edge needed to change direction in a given situation. Sometimes less edging is more skilled edging. This is the paradox of the edging skill. When edging involves all the body's major joints, we describe it as angulation. When it is done properly, edging actually begins at the ankle. Muscular action pronates the foot inside the boot to start the edging process. Following the involvement of the ankle, the rest of the joints assume an angulated position. In this way, the amount of edge is established and balance is maintained. To develop the skill of edging, the student has to learn new ways of moving. One way to do this is to try the movements while standing still. As in any kind of exercise, it's important that the real sensation be simulated as closely as possible. Here, with the help of a ski pole, the skier supports his center of gravity while assuming an angulated position. A variation of this exercise can be done in pairs. This simple exercise will further enhance the feeling of edging. Notice how the outside ski is edged each time. Now in order to simulate real skiing, simply add more speed. This is a valuable exercise to teach because it helps to develop the correct feeling for the skill of edging. For best results when demonstrating this exercise, try to leave a narrow track in the snow. When overdone, even a useful movement such as the knee angulation we see here can create problems. Notice how excessive knee angulation causes the hip to move outwards. The result of this could actually be less edge angle and an over-rotated hip position. Good skiing rarely shows extremes of knee or hip angulation. Well-developed edging skills make it possible for the skier to master steeper terrain and more difficult conditions. That's why the development of this skill is so important for advancement. Pressure control is probably the most difficult skill to master. Like pivoting and edging, it's always present to some degree in all types of turns. However, as speed increases and as the terrain becomes more difficult, the skill of pressure control becomes the critical factor in advanced ski technique. 
The action of pivoting and then edging the skis will produce changes in pressure. The same effect can be produced by skiing on uneven terrain. Learning to regulate the pressure required for effective skiing takes considerable practice. Pressure control is probably the most difficult of the three skills to develop. Pressure control means dealing with large changes in pressure on the skis. It also means regulating pressure along the length of the skis as well as from one ski to another. Pressure is a sensory type of feedback. To learn pressure control, every skier needs to experiment with changes in pressure and how they are produced. Many miles on skis are required to properly learn this skill. To deal with irregular terrain, expert skiers need to be able to increase or decrease pressure on their skis at will. One of the easiest ways to introduce pressure control is to have the students try to maintain constant pressure on the feet while traversing some bumps. Notice that bending the legs reduces pressure while extending them increases it. Watch closely as the skier releases and applies pressure. This expert demonstrates how to handle difficult terrain by using maximum flexion and extension. Many good skiers have well-developed edging and pivoting skills. What sets apart the true experts is their mastery of the skill of pressure control. As a ski instructor, it's important to fully understand the skills concept. It helps to simplify all ski technique taught by the CSIA. And when presented properly, it can assist skiers of any ability to feel and learn what good skiing is all about.